The Walker's Oot route starts in Chamonix, France, crosses the border into Switzerland over 200 kilometers of varied terrain across a dozen mountain ridges, and ends in the border town of Zermatt. I was inspired to take a trek as a reward for finishing my PhD, but was delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So a year and a half after I got the idea, I was finally prepared to make the two week long trek. So I managed to get together everything that I'll need for my walker's boot route. Let's take a look at the equipment that I'll be using. I have my sleeping bag. I have a sleeping bag liner, uh, which is down right here. I have an inflatable pillow, an inflatable mattress. I have an ultralight tent. Uh, I have a winter coat here in case it starts snowing. Uh, I've been told that there is snow year around in certain parts of the route. Here are my clothes. I really only am taking the bare essentials. I'm taking one change of clothes uh, and uh, some long johns and then a tiny, tiny hand towel. I got my walking sticks, which are going to be very, very important. Uh, some charger equipment, uh, my portable battery there. Now let's take a look to see if everything is going to fit into my backpack. What I'm carrying right now is about 28.2 pounds, uh, and that's the base weight, and so that's not including water or food or things like that. So uh, that's actually at the upper cusp of what people on the internet apparently recommend you carry, so I am carrying a lot. Uh, looks like I have my work cut out for me, uh, but I'm excited uh, and I'm ready to go. So, after three planes and a three hour bus ride, I finally arrived in Chamonix last night. Got a good night's rest at a hotel here to get energy up for the first day. I'm just north of the city. This is the start of my 120 plus mile, 200 plus kilometer uh, trek from Chamonix to Zermatt. Here we go. I set out with fresh legs and an enthusiasm to match. I crossed into the borders of Switzerland at Col de Balm just as the weather changed. On day one, I journeyed nearly 15 miles to the town of Trion. Unfortunately, day two's trek to the town of Champay was full of clouds and rain and very few scenic views. The weather and the 23 miles of intense hiking had me second guess my ability to finish the route. All right, so. Day three, the first two days were really mentally exhausting. The first day was long. The second day it rained all day. There was a lot of mud, uh, slowed me down a lot. It's finally sunny. I just left the town of Champagne. It's got a, a really nice little lake here and we're going mostly downhill today. So uh, hopefully it'll be a nice, easier day.
Let me give you a tour of uh, where I'm staying tonight. So here is everything. Pretty sluggish uh, and exhausted before I took the cable car up here. But now that I'm up here, uh, I just feel a sense of revitalization. We'll see if this can carry me up to Mont 4. At the end of day four, I stayed at Cabain du Montfort before beginning a grueling two-day journey. Look at this. Feels like I'm climbing up Mountain Doom. After talking with other trekkers, I decided to go an alternate route over the mountains across Col de la Chaux, where I met high winds, rocky areas, and snow. I also made some new friends along the way with whom I'd travel on and off along the route. No, 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 no. We escaped most of the rain and stayed in a second mountain cabin for the night before some more spectacular weather and views. The two-day trek was one of the most challenging parts of the trip. We climbed over rocky terrain, culminating in a steep climb up a ridge with some help. Okay, I just uh, came into the town of Orola. This is the end of day six, so officially about halfway, almost halfway there. Uh, went about 90 something kilometers. We were able to see Zermatt from uh, on top of one of the ridges on our hike today. Uh, it was pretty rainy yesterday uh, and really craggy and so I uh, had a, a bit of a rough go the past couple of days. Tomorrow we should be much uh, more relaxed and so looking forward to it.
Day eight was one of the most difficult parts of the walk. Not long into my hike, though, I was treated to something rare. After meeting Francois, the Alphorn player, I continued on my journey to climb 1,800 meters and two mountain ridges in one day. Just keep breathing. That's the key. But the day's trek led to some of the most spectacular views of the trip. The day's hike culminated in a stay at Cabane de Mori with an absolutely amazing view of the Mori Glacier. but the intense daily treks were starting to get to me. Okay, after about nine days of carrying about 30 plus pounds on me, uh, I made the decision that if I was going to finish the Oot route, then I would need to lighten the load. So I sent all my camping gear ahead of me to Zermatt and I cut down the weight by about half and hopefully that'll help me finish the walk. This is literally a 45 degree angle. <sighs> the terrain from Grubin to St. Nicholas varied from greenery and forests to plains and snow. From St. Nicholas, I had a decision to make. All right, so here's the deal. The last leg of the trip has hikers go up across a very long suspension bridge, about 500 meters long, which is about a quarter of a mile. And despite climbing over about a dozen mountain ridges over the past 11 days, I'm afraid of heights. So I'm walking along the valley and tomorrow I'm going to climb up the side of the mountain and join the last leg of the trail to get a great view of the Matterhorn. So I'm sitting here in the town of Teish on the day before the very last day of my 13 day hike. And I've been in tunnel vision the past couple of weeks. You know, I wake up, uh, climb over a mountain ridge or two with constant achiness and, and, and soreness in my feet and my legs uh, and my shoulders and so I feel a sense of, of yeah, just focus you know um, I'm sure that the euphoria and the sense of accomplishment uh, are gonna come tomorrow once I cross the over that mountain ridge and see uh, the Matterhorn Okay, so I'm a little north of the city and 
I'm on a, a road that'll take me to a side trail. My hope is that trail will take me up to the main trail so I can join the last leg of the journey. Knowing I've come this far gave me the boost of energy I needed for the last leg of the two week journey. Finally, after 13 days, I came into view of the Matterhorn. All right, finally made it into Zermatt after 13 days. Ended the evening with a celebration with some new friends. I wanted to do something mentally and physically challenging. I feel so lucky to have traveled during this challenging time in history. video. Uh, so, day one. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Hey! Hey!